Okay, welcome to the first catch and cook in quite some time. Um, this bluefish is perfect, perfect size. It's in perfect condition. It was bled out and placed on ice, and this is the next day. So perfectly fine as long as you keep it cold and keep it whole. So I'll use this fish to walk through some of the basics of cleaning and presenting a whole fish. We're going to grill this one. And as you see, I, I snip off all the fins and now I'm scaling it. Now when you're scaling fish, whether you use a scaler or a knife, this is a Deba knife, whatever you use, you have to scale all the hard to reach areas. So here I'm doing the back of the tail, the underside, and later you'll see me even scale the cheek because there's there's edible meat in the cheek that that's usually considered a delicacy and you don't want your guest or your family to get a mouthful of scales wherever they choose to pick apart the fish so now we're rinsing off the fish and then in between cuts i'm rinsing the cutting board as well you go in through the anal fin all the way up to the top and be careful not to puncture any organs if you can and here I'm just separating the gill plate from the head and what you want to do is grab the base of the gills where it connects to the body and pull downwards generally speaking most species of fish if you if you do it correctly all the guts will come out with the gills it, it's all connected after you remove all the guts in one fell swoop, you have to deal with the bloodline. And this, I believe, is the fish's kidneys. And you can use your fingers on some species. You might use a brush. Um, porgies, notoriously difficult to remove. But on bluefish, your fingers and paper towels, you can get most of it. Very important to dry your fish thoroughly after you rinse them in water. And for bluefish, we're gonna salt this down. Porgies as well. Certain species really benefit from sort of a dry brine. It's half curing it overnight in the fridge. And I'm using kosher salt and just hitting every available surface, inside, outside. Uh, make sure you get the strip along the back as well as the head. And what you want to do is, after you lay down a layer of salt, you want to wrap it up in paper towels and then tin foil. And what this is going to do is, it's going to draw a lot of moisture out from the fish. And you're also going to season the meat very evenly. And here you see me stuffing the cavity with paper towels. And then I'm going to wrap the fish up in paper towels. Um, you'll see the next day, these paper towels will pretty much be soaked through. And then you're left with a very firm and well-seasoned fish, ready for the grill, ready for the oven, whatever you want to do with it. So this package is going in the fridge for anywhere from 5 hours to 12 hours. You don't want to overdo it, but at least 5 hours and you'll see the effects when you go and cook the fish. Okay, here I'm just slicing up some lemons, ginger, crushed garlic, thyme, and rosemary. It can be any combination of aromatic fruits and vegetables. You can use oranges. This is going to add some aroma, but more importantly, you just want to stuff the body cavity so it gives it a nice shape while it cooks. And then everything will cook very evenly. So this is the following day. The fish has firmed up. I'm just hitting it with some grapeseed oil and inside and out. And this next step is completely optional. I am sprinkling some paprika on the fish just to give it some color and obviously flavor. And the main thing to take away from this whole recipe is the technique. All right, so we've, we've cleaned the fish We've salted it down so now it's firm and we're going to use a grill basket on the grill. Everything else is sort of whatever strikes your fancy. It just depends on your palate. Um, you can use curry powder. You can omit spices altogether and use maybe some kind of 
tarragon vinaigrette, some kind of herb-based vinaigrette. I'll leave a link to a couple of videos down below, give you guys some ideas on flavor profiles and matching it to grilled or roasted fish. But in any case, um, um, here I'm just stuffing the body cavity with the aromatic stuff that I cut up before. And then this whole fish is going to go into the grill basket. So I did harvest this fish with this grill basket in mind. Um, it ended up being a perfect fit, especially after you cut the tail off. But in my opinion, you want a single grill basket. So you don't want something that you can fit three or four fish in like a rectangle. Because when you go to turn it you're not going to have as much control over the hottest part of the grill, right? And you'll see what I'm talking about once we go outside. So here, the left part of the grill on this particular grill is the hottest. And you can make it that way. So I have the left burner on high and then the middle burner on medium. Um, but you see, if... If there's two or three fish side by side in a larger basket, when I go turn it, the one on the very left is now going to be over medium heat, which is not what you want. So instead of that, you want to use single long taper baskets for your fish if you are using a grill basket. It, it does make life a lot easier. Certain species like porgies, you can grill whole fairly easily with high rates of success but bluefish in my opinion grill basket is the way to go in any case hottest part of the grill you want to do your fish 80 percent through on the hottest part and if you have multiple fish then you can start shuffling them around um, since you have a grill basket it's a question of turning it once every maybe two or three minutes that will achieve the most even cooking. Now, if you don't have a grill basket, then you're gonna cook the first side until it's completely done. And then you have to play around with whether or not the skin is sticking. Um, this, this takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. So here, that's about two, two and a half minutes on very high heat, and you see a nice bark already forming. With this type of grilling, um, on, on fish that you've half cured overnight is less a question about hitting a specific temperature window. Um, the meat is not going to overcook as easily as fish that has not been salted down, right? So you're kind of brining the fish. Um, it, it, it's sort of like a ham or a brine turkey. Difficult to overcook. You're, you're giving yourself a lot more room. And what you're focusing on instead is the presentation side, so the surface. You want crispy skin, you want nice color, and you don't have to worry as much about hitting a specific window. Now, if you're cooking a fluke filet, you're talking 10 seconds, right? I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of timing to cook a fluke filet perfectly. This is not that. This is just don't don't get too much color, but make sure you get nice presentation on the whole fish. Crispy skin and all the rest of it. Here I'm standing the fish on its back. The back has a lot more meat than the stomach. And once again, just a lot easier with the grill basket. Okay, so now the fish is pretty much done. I would say total cooking time about 12 minutes flipping it a few times over and a little bit too much color on that side so that side is the side we're gonna put on the bottom of the plate when we present um, there's always a side that's gonna look better so th that's the side you want to focus on not screwing up when you release the fish from the basket so very gently remove the top piece and the bottom piece. I'll leave a link to this particular fish basket. It actually works pretty well. This is the first time I'm using it. Um, yeah, nice and slow. And then the bottom piece, you wanna jiggle it just a little bit before you flip it onto the plate. 
So here I think I almost dropped the fish, but in any case, plate on top. Um, make sure you have a firm handle on it and then just a quick flip and it should come right out. So in terms of presentation, I like to keep it simple. I'll leave another link to a whole roasted wheat fish we did a couple years ago. And you can get pretty elaborate. You can get a nice platter, lay down some grilled vegetables and um, lots of microgreens. You know, so it's, it's, it's as fancy or as plain as you want to make it. But the focus is the fish. Just always, always keep that in mind. So back to this bluefish, I'm just slapping it on a plate. Couple lime wedges and I'm ready to go. This is just a dinner for myself. And I'm also filming this solo. Usually my cousin Mark, Shore Money, is behind the camera. In any case, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of lime and in a second I'll show you what the meat looks like on, on this bluefish. It's pretty good. It's firm, it's well seasoned, and each bite will contain a little bit of that crispy skin we work so hard for over the grill. Okay, so that is the pared down version of any grill fish recipe. And I hope you found that helpful. Um, just remember, cooking, fishing, doesn't matter. It's all about technique and practice. So, in case, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.